Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Seventy years ago this month, the uh, Second World War ended with the signing of the Instrument of Surrender on the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay on September the 2nd, 1945. The signatories of that document, for a brief word of background before we introduce our guests, the United States, Japan, the Dominion of Canada, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, the Provisional Government of the Republic of France, the Republic of China, the Dominion of New Zealand, and the Commonwealth of Australia. This generation has been called, and rightfully so, the greatest generation. And one could argue that singularly their victory over tyranny and fascism and imperialism and Nazism would have been sufficient to call them great. I believe that greatness was manifest during World War II, but it existed prior to World War II, and as closely as I've known this group through the years, it's been manifest in the years after World War II. John Fleming, and if you'll hold your seats just for a moment, I'll have them stand as a group. John Fleming and I were together last week, and I suspect there might be some that think that this story could be embellished, and that John Fleming was doing what he's always done over 90 years of age, serving in our community. Throughout the crowd, they were wearing John Fleming buttons with his picture on it. And it wasn't because he was a World War II vet, and it wasn't because of his exploits in World War II. He was involved in a community event, restoring Joanna Furness. He's done it for decades. And John was driving a fire truck during this event. That would have been sufficient enough to leave the story there. But John built the fire truck from parts. I know some of you are like, yeah, we're going to talk to this guy afterwards. I was back at John's machine shop. He put it together with parts brought in from all over the country. That's just something that John does. He serves in this community. George Moore, Battle of the Bulge, one of the bloodiest conflicts in American history. December of 44 to January of 45, the Ardennes Forest, the last place in the world you'd want to be, likely to be killed by frostbite or Nazi machine gun fire. 19,000 Americans died. There were nearly 100,000 casualties. George has never stopped serving. George is part of a group, not only honors veterans, but brings that history to young people in our community and for years has headed up the Burks chapter of the Battle of the Bulge. In between these gentlemen is uh, Irene, looking ever radiant, who is uh, the wife of Everett. Uh, Everett and I just talked uh, this morning. I asked Everett, had he ever told his wife this story? She remarked, um, Irene Keffer, that she'd not hold, hold, heard the story before. Um, Everett thought that he had told her. When Everett told me that he was on PC 1261 in Normandy on June 6, 1944 at Utah Beach, I needed to hear a little bit more of the story. Everett's PC 1261, welcome to look it up on Wikipedia, was the first ship that was sunk during D-Day, 58 minutes before H hour, was hit by a Nazi shore battery. Everett was blown out of the ship and landed in the English Channel without a life preserver and seriously, seriously wounded. Nearby him, as he related the story to me, 
was floating, unfortunately a dead comrade who had a life jacket on, which he clung to for several hours. A few minutes after Everett's ship was hit, he watched it sink into the waters off of Normandy. Ladies and gentlemen, these are heroes. The Commonwealth is in their debt. Whether in the front of the room or the back of the room, whether you fought on the beaches, in the air, in the towns, you are American treasures. We've got a responsibility today with heavy hearts for those 400,000 400,000 plus that didn't come home, for those 60 to 80 million human beings that died during the Second World War, we've got heavy hearts. But because of the heroism of these men in this room, the Dachau's, the Auschwitz, the Bergen, Belsons were shuttered. And those that were responsible were brought to justice. And the Bataan death march, marches ended and the POW camps were evacuated because of the heroism of these men. When duty called, they answered. And they answered valiantly, which is why patriotism defeated Nazism and heroism defeated imperialism. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what more could be said. 15 million of their comrades have gone on to the reward and they're well done, thou good and faithful servant. So today, we simply say to these assembled heroes, as they stand up, please, if you would, stand just for a moment. Each of you stand up. Irene, you're welcome to stand with them. Today, we corporately say, well done. <laughs>